something lurks off the coast of Block Island, silently influencing the behavior of fisherman Tom Lynch. After suffering a series of violent outbursts, he unknowingly puts his family in grave danger. What'd you think? Um, no, I, I actually really liked this movie, but this is kind of, this is my jam. Is it? So it is. I, I love, I, well, first off, I love horror or the supernatural feel of horror kind of stuff. And this was more of a psychological thriller. Yeah. But it did this great job of creating this really weird, unsettling, just uncomfortability from the start. And I love that. I think you're right. It carried I, through. Yeah. I have thoughts. Um, I think this was the deconstruction of a man throughout oh. the, the whole film. Um, and what I struggled with was nailing a theme. I had a hard time trying to like, what are we trying to say? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, because this film is about a guy that, uh, you know, his dad sleepwalks and we think he has dementia. It turns out that his dad is seeing, being controlled by some weird creature and is yeah. uh, dragging things out to the sea and they're disappearing. So you think like... Okay, sea creature Cthulhu, something he's feeding something in the depth, in the depths. Right. So I really like that it leads you that way, and then there's the big twist. Spoiler alert: it's aliens. It's aliens. Yeah. <laughs> by aliens looking no and by looking at the poster, now I can see like the poster's a dead giveaway. Right. Yeah. I, I never, I never looked at the poster <laughs> to really think of it. So I'm just watching. I'm going, okay, yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the poster, he's upside down. So you're thinking, okay, yeah, he's being dragged to the sky. Right. Now it all makes sense. But yeah, for sure. I still enjoyed the twist. Um, and I finally figured out the theme and part of it is they're talking about how his sister is a, uh, works for a research lab and they study fish and they study the migrate, migrate, migrating fish and all these things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and so then they tie that nicely in a bow at the end about how we're the fish and the aliens are just checking us out. Right. Right. So. It, to me, it feels very Lovecraftian. It feels oh, very right. almost nihilistic of you don't realize how small and inconsequential you truly are in the universe. And so I think that's a nice check on the ego. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you, that's perfect. That's a perfect really touch on what like a theme would be. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely weren't heavy handed with it. It's it was very subtle. I mean, it, it right. hits only a few moments throughout the script. But I think in something like this, I guess it makes more sense. You don't you don't need to go like the color of space from it where you're just beating somebody over the head about like you're just right. a tiny human. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and now exactly. you're gonna melt. Yeah. Yeah. So we so we don't have to do that. Um the thriller aspect was great because they really do keep you on edge. Um, and what I found fascinating is that uh, you never see the creature. Yes, I love it. I love it. I'm such a huge fan of that. I'm such a, less is more, always less is more when it comes to horror like this. But yeah, the less right. that you see the creature or if you don't see this, the creature or the demon, it's it's scarier because the unknown is so scary for us as, as a human brain, a human function that we can't see it and we can't we can't touch it and we can't realize it. So that makes the fear worse. Yeah. It's, it's the, um, it's thing it's anxiety inducing, you know, because mm -hmm. the brain is a problem solver. Like it's a computer. Right. It's, it wants to solve problems. And if you don't right. see the creature and you can't put your eye on it, you don't know what's going on. So internally you're kind of going crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and I talked to Philip Eisner. He was on the show. He did event horizon and he had a great point about not showing the creature and he said, if you show the creature too much, they might see the zipper. <laughs> I was like, that is a great point. And I think in a it's film, interesting. yeah, and I think in a film like this, it's a lower budget. They did mm -hmm. a good job. Do we need to blow the entire budget on aliens in a spaceship and a fire out of sky moment? I don't think so. No, uh -uh. I think it, I think it worked for, yeah, you, like you said, low budget. It worked for what the message that they were trying to convey in that way um because the whole time you're right i'm like is there something out there 
underneath right. the water, which is scary on its own. So we are just completely obsessed with this idea of like, yes, what's out in, the, in space and UFOs. Right, right. But what we really don't know is that there's probably scarier things under the water <laughs> and in the ocean than yeah. there would be in space. Well, they, they keep, you know, discovering new species in deep in yeah. deep water that we've never seen before, didn't even hear about. So, yeah, it, it's pretty crazy. Um, what I think was really cool um, is that they kept focusing on the water at, yeah. to throw you off. So right. they did it visually, subtextually. So you go, like, oh, okay, there's a couple of water rippling, or there would be some B footage, some B roll footage of the of the the lake or the ocean or anything mm -hmm. like that or right. even, even simple things like in his house like a cup of coffee or or beer you know like they yeah. kept focusing on it and kept just trying to mentally throw you off of the fact those aliens and i thought it worked i thought it was good you know they're educating you in a certain way to twist and i and i really i really did enjoy them and i appreciated it because it took the script or the film to a different level so i mm -hmm. thought that was really smart filmmaking yeah, yeah, I really liked that. And I I like that it is this likened to where you're, the characters are being called out there. So through electronics and through um, electromagnetic aspects, right there, they hear the signal, they, they feel the vibration of them being called to go do what they need to do. And um, that's so true in nature. So she's studying these fish that are migratory or right. um, animals that you know we we know half the year they're one place and half the year they're caught they're in another and sometimes right. we don't know why we don't know why they go there or what they do and it was the same thing so I thought that, that was really cool that dichotomy um, between yeah. those things no I I agree I thought that was good some some good, some good duality there and I also really enjoyed um, his father being kind of the uh, his his monster in his head. So you right. hear you'd hear the radio go off, and then you start wondering: Is the really radio really going off, or is it just in his mind? Right, is this guy losing his head. You know, is it a parasite? You know, because we had that supporting character early on who was a ringer, which I love. That we'll have to talk about that. But yeah. I like the fact that he kept seeing his dad. Right, yeah. he kept seeing his dad, and his dad is calling him to do things in a really creepy way. Mm -hmm. And that actor had such a haunting oh. look about him. I know. I was so like, good. my God. Yeah. yeah. So it was, it was awesome um, to really kind of personalize that to make it feel like we oh, have the monsters within mm -hmm. what am I trying to do? And, and seeing him fight, you know, dragging his, dragging his niece or the girl on the road or whatever yeah, out towards the ocean as he's getting worse and worse mm -hmm. uh, and losing the trial. I thought it was really good. It was interesting too, because the father's character in the beginning you know, as time goes on and then he does go missing and they're like, you know, he was having problems with memory. Maybe he had dementia. He, he was, his health was failing. And when you go back and you watch the performance of that actor, he really does do a good job of showing that level of confusion where he doesn't, he thinks he's this yeah. is okay. This is what's really happening to me. Yeah. And you can see that sense on his face. And then, you know, our central character later on the son it's more of a madness. He's angry. Yeah. So it's an angry madness. So it manifests on the outside of them the way they're really feeling on the inside. Yeah. Which I thought I was really cool. No, I thought it was cool. It's good, good choices by the actors. And and they oh, both yeah. kind of cock their head and drop their jaw as mm -hmm. they're going into that kind of mindless mode, which I thought right. was interesting. Right. Uh, so there's probably coordination there. But um I really enjoyed his friend who was the conspiracy theorist yeah. and, this, and this is why i liked how they did this because in these films you always find the conspiracy theorist who is you know just exposition and let me explain to you what's really happening and then the audience gets caught up and then he mm -hmm. probably dies or, or whatever but right. it gets us going in the direction and it kind of picks up the pace but here i love the twist is that he's just a crazy fringe dude and yep. has nothing to do with the plot and it's right. completely wrong. He's a chemtrail, you know, whatever guy. <laughs> Files kind of guy. X Files yeah. <laughs> kind of guy finding conspiracies where there are none. So he's like dead wrong. And I love mm -hmm. that. And I love that twist there because that's what you want to do. You want to lead an audience towards what their comfort and expectations are of a film right. and then take it away. Take it away. Yeah. Because at some point you feel like, okay, he's the ally here. So he's going to help explain, he's going to yeah. help fix it. And instead this character just walks away and goes, 
he's a nutbag. Like, and just, <laughs> that's it. And he's just yeah. like, uh, I'm not going to believe any of this. He's so just, it was, it's funny. It was great. Yeah. yeah. I really liked it. Yeah. yeah and he was just, good. Good performance by that guy. It was good. It was good. It was, it was necessary comedy relief, which is good because we need it because yeah. this is a heavy film. Mm -hmm. um, so it was good. It brings that in. Um, the actor was great. And I just like the fact that, yeah, he, it didn't matter. And then again, more twists where she goes to the guy in the woods and then realizes, oh, this, that it's the aliens and that he was targeted and he's hiding. And I really right. like that. So you yeah. find the ally in an unexpected way. And so yes. if, if you're out there, you're doing a low budget thriller and you want to see a good way to work within your budget and to break expectations, I think the Block Island Sound is a good template. Oh, for sure. That a yeah. writer could use. Yeah, because I didn't even see that. I mean, in a way, when the doctor's like, hey, I've seen this kind of condition. This is where you live. They put this new wind farm there, you know. And yeah. then they're like, oh, okay, now they're going to explain it that way. But then when you get to this guy, he's like, no, that's not that's what they're saying but that's not what it is it was really good <laughs> it was like oh okay yeah. now we're yeah it was great no i really i really enjoyed it and and that guy's a good actor i think he he's been in he's been in a few other things i've seen him and he's always he was always has like a powerful um approach yeah. to to the way he delivers a line and so you're yeah. like whoa okay is he gonna hurt her is he not yeah. gonna hurt her you know like you don't know what's gonna happen and i love when a when a scene puts you on edge like that yeah um and that's what a lot of this film does is it doesn't give you time to really lull about and get bored like you want to know what's going on mm -hmm. yep it, it always there's always this sense of um yeah like you're even just along the ride like for the ride with this character where he wakes up and he goes i don't know why i'm losing time we're like we don't either what's going yeah. on with you like we're, we're all kind of on that journey together yeah but there's there's it's, it's there's a sense of urgency there of trying to figure out because we all know where it's going right because right. the because the dad wakes up first opening scene mm -hmm. wakes up in the boat around some dead fish you go that's weird and then he pulls a dog collar yes water yeah. and you're gone yeah, that's that's not right. <laughs> yeah. Then you're watching this character slowly do the same thing. So it's food and then animals and what's next? Well, it has to be a human because yeah, the grocery mart scene was crazy where he's like <laughs> filling up the taking all the meat with all the ham. <laughs> yeah. All the meat. I want all of it. That's I need like, all yeah. of it. I'll take all of it, please. That's I'll take crazy. All of it. <laughs> yeah, no, it was really good. I, I quite enjoyed it. So what are you thinking? Uh, uh, well, I guess what are your final thoughts on this film? Um, I, again, like you said, I feel like this is a great kind of template to, if, if you're looking to create, um, a sense of from the start, your audience is just on edge and the whole time they're not necessarily over scared, but you're just carrying them through this just anxiety filled tension the whole time. I thought this was really good because from the beginning, that uncomfortability was there for me. Yeah. And, and it carries through for me. And I love, I love films like that, that just keep me on edge the whole time. It never really, it never really lulled for me. And I really yeah. appreciated that. No, I agree. I mean, I mean, Hitchcock talks about it's the walking down the hallway mm -hmm. towards the monster, which is the part that gets you. It's not right. getting past the door and finding the monster. It's the, exactly. it's the anticipation. Yes. And I think that's what this is, is it builds upon the anticipation and then throws in enough twists and turns to keep you going because if it didn't have those twists if it didn't have those surprises i could see this as being a, a film that you're watching and the next thing you know you're on your cell phone you yeah, know but but right or, or, or smartphone sorry <laughs> i'm i'm old smartphone <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry i was oh, trying to like listen to the, the get the comments over here to see if yeah. anyone was commenting so ryan johnson said monster is very effective until the end so that might be one that we need to uh we need to look at as well. But what are you thinking for next week? I don't know. You pick, because I picked this one. Well, I think you told me you wanted to watch Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead, right? I'm totally fine with doing that. I'm so game for it. It's going to be fun. All right. Well, we can definitely do Army of the Dead. I know it's it. everywhere and everybody's got reviews on it, but we're not going to review it. We're going to analyze it. We're going to check it out and, yes. uh, and hopefully uh, bring a new angle to these things. I also wanted to mention that this episode is brought to you by the Script Summit Screenplay Contest, where you can win a cash prize or the chance to have a contract with a Hollywood talent manager. 
Well, this was a lot of fun. I think this was a good choice. We'll do Army of the Dead uh, next week. And then Christy and I are also talking about starting a uh, account, like a a little prize giveaway next month, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. So more details to come, but I think that... uh... I think it'll be fun to maybe give out some prizes during these. I think that could be a lot of fun. So we will set that up uh, probably the first week of June. All right. Well, thanks a lot, everybody.